And here we are at the U.S. Embassy in Israel. Yo, what's up? Here we are going through the Joppa Gates, heading towards the Temple Mount. Going to Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa. Going to Al-Aqsa. Shalom. Going to Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa. Going to Al-Aqsa. Salam alaikum. Got here early, first in line. Announcement and warning. According to Torah law, entering the Temple Mount area is strictly forbidden due to the holiness of the site. So this is how you get up to Al-Aqsa after you've gone through security. And down there is That's the uh, gathering place in front of the Western Wall. Here we have the Dome of the Rock. This was the location of Israel's temples, the Temple of Solomon, the temple built by Herod the Great. And now we have the Dome of the Rock, which marks the location that Muhammad supposedly Ascended to heaven for his night journey. Pretty cool to be first in line. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Side of the Dome of the Rock. And Look at that demon. I mean, I know that's just a rock formation, but seriously, why would you pick that for the side of the Dome of the Rock? Jesus is Lord. 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 Assalamu alaikum. Hey. Are you Muslim? No. You are not Muslim. No. All right. There's a dude who follows me around whenever I go anywhere near the Dome of the Rock, so just gonna head on down here. All right, so this is the southeast corner of the temple grounds. That's the Mount of Olives over the top of the wall there. And man, this place is just massive. So that's the Dome of the Rock way over there. And this is the Al-Aqsa mosque which is on the southern end let's see if we can catch a glimpse of the mount of olives through this small opening
This is pretty cool. There's this little olive orchard. Right here on the Temple Mount. This is on the eastern side that I'm standing on right now. So looking west towards the Dome of the Rock. There are all these cool little areas. This looks like there's a place for sitting. Cat. They should clean up this place. Guys, this place is massive. So this is the northeast corner of the temple grounds. Look, you can't even see, can't even see any of the other sides. And that's the Dome of the Rock way off in the distance. So I'm approaching the Dome of the Rock from the north. Quran says that Muhammad's night journey, he traveled to the farthest mosque. Muslims historically interpret it as here. Problem is, there certainly was no mosque during this time or a temple. This is the northwest corner, so that's the northern wall there. And again, this place is so big, you can't even see all these huge structures. I think someone said it's the size of about 38 football fields up here. Oh, there we go. There's the dome off in the distance. I'm at the northwest corner of the raised area of the Dome of the Rock. So this is the western side of the Dome of the Rock, which would make everything on the other side of that the western wall. Looky here, I finally found the Dajjal here on the Temple Mount. All right, I am at the southwest corner of the temple grounds, Al-Aqsa Mosque here. Dome of the Rock way over there. Means I walked all the way around. Here's an area for ablutions, water here right outside the mosque. So, Al-Aqsa Mosque, Dome of the Rock, Dome of the Rock, Al-Aqsa Mosque. All right, I am at the edge of Jerusalem and we're looking over at the West Bank. And you can see the security fences that go along here. Now, when, you, when we hear about the borders in, in the media, uh, they always show the concrete wall. The concrete walls are only about 5% of the border walls between the West Bank and Israel. There are concrete walls. If you, uh, if you go up a little farther, 
See there? Uh, but it's usually just fences. But the fences are actually very sophisticated. Uh, there's one fence, and uh, if you get past that one, then the area in between, there are all kinds of uh, sensors and so on that if you touch the next fence, a uh, message goes out that there is someone, there's someone uh, touching the fence. It can detect uh, metal and so on. And uh, so if you touch that fence, uh, the cameras in the area, security cameras in the area, immediately point over there so they can make sure it's not some kid running after his ball or something like that. But just to give you the layout, um, that is the West Bank. And along the places along the edge of the fence, close to the fence, that's a refugee camp. And that is a pretty nice refugee camp. And on, on the other side of that, so past that, is Bethlehem. All right, so when I was recording a few minutes ago, that's the area I was recording from. So this is the edge of Jerusalem. Jerusalem goes along here and winds, winds down around here to these buses. And I mentioned that there are concrete, concrete walls, although most of the border, or uh, barrier, I should say, is fencing, there are areas where there are concrete borders, and those would be areas where a concrete border is important. Right here is a large bus terminal. So you don't want someone with bombs right on the other side of a fence right here. You want something more significant. If you're wondering if I'm allowed to be filming here, I was actually walking along this wall with the man who built it. And an interesting thing that he pointed out is that uh, they tend to catch just about everyone who's trying to cross these fences and, board and barriers, but a lot of the people who try to cross are women fleeing their families because they're suspected of adultery or something like that, and so they have to flee. And just so you know, uh, if their story checks out, there are organizations that take care of them here. So this is the West Bank on the other side of that wall, and that's Jerusalem. The main reason for having a border is that uh, not very long ago, people from the West Bank would uh, cross this area and go up into Jerusalem to work. And that wasn't, that wasn't a significant problem, but terrorists would also go up there with them. And so Ariel Sharon, prime minister, asked his military, what do we need to do? And the military said, we need some kind of barrier there. So here is the border wall between the area controlled by Jerusalem and the West Bank. One of the concerns is that even though this is very good at stopping people from crossing, what about drones? And there are all kinds of solutions for that being developed. One is that as a drone goes over top, there's uh, a jamming signal that jams it and then the drone just falls down. Another is that if a drone is expected of being loaded with explosives, an emergency homing device would be activated and send it back to the guy controlling it. Whoa. These are the ruins of the area of the Pool of Bethesda. 
Now, not these current pillars that are standing now. Those are the remnants of a later church. But if you see this area over here, like steps, where you would step down, people would be sitting on these steps. And where do you step down? You step down here. Go down into the pool here. And if you look closely, you can even see little frogs swimming around. By the way, those frogs were all sick until they went into the pool. Right beside the pool of Bethesda is the Church of St. Anne. According to church tradition, Anne and Joachim were the parents of Mary. And this church was built over what, according to tradition, was the house of Mary and Joachim. Crusaders took Jerusalem and this church was soon built. Later, when Muslim ruler Saladin took back Jerusalem, this was converted into an Islamic law school. Turkey eventually returned the building to France and a couple different groups have controlled it until now. This is called the Tower of David. King Herod had three towers in this area. This is the only one that partly survived. So it's only the foundation area that's original. All right, so let's put some of this together. Uh, what do we have way over here? We have the Mount of Olives. So we are looking east towards the Mount of Olives. Here a little closer, we have the Temple Mount. City of David would be over here. And I am on the Tower of David. This is not an actual Tower of David. It was named that long after. This was originally built by King Herod. Now, uh, Herod's palace is over here towards my south, and uh, starting right uh, a little closer than this parking lot towards me, uh, going back a little further back there. I think it's an Armenian uh, seminary now, but this was the area of Herod's palace. So that's Herod's palace over there, and that's where Pilate would have pronounced judgment uh, to sentence Jesus to death by crucifixion. Jesus would have then been taken out, uh, along uh, City Road. Uh, keep in mind, there's, there's a route over here, but this was outside the city at the time. So Jesus would have been taken from Herod's palace into the city, and then along the route in there, inside the wall, and then would have had to exit outside the wall until we get to what is now the Church of the Holy Sepulchre which is considered 
by many to be the site of the crucifixion. This is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. These entrances were not original. The original was built in the 4th century. These doorways were built during the time of the Crusaders, and one was filled in by Saladin. Yo, heading back to the hotel. Didn't really get to record all the footage of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre that I wanted. Uh, it was way too crowded. I don't know if it's always that crowded or if it's because we tried going in there on Sunday, but yeah, just didn't get to record most of the things I wanted to record in there. So I think I'm going to come back at some point and find out ahead of time what's the best time to record. So anyway, that's why that got cut short. More tomorrow.